Well, thank you, Kelda, um, and Morena, everyone. Um, can I thank you uh, for the invitation to, to be here with you this morning and also to speak and answer, importantly, answer your questions and first uh, hear firsthand from the sector about what's uh, important to you. Uh, first, um, I'd like to briefly talk about the importance of rural voices in the development of communications policy and technology and our continued initiatives uh, to strengthen rural connectivity and the future of connectivity uh, in New Zealand. As you know, improved connectivity is being provided by uh, private network operators in partnership with government uh, through uh, three programmes. First of all, the UFB, uh, the Rural Broadband Initiative or RBI and the Mobile Black Spot Fund. Uh, we had at last count uh, 1.48 million Kiwi households and businesses able to connect uh, to UFB uh, and when we're done 87% of all New Zealanders will be able to have access to ultra fast broadband. Uh, the first phase of the RBI saw around 300,000 New Zealand households and businesses receive improved broadband. Uh, while this is an impressive feat, um, it was followed by the expansion program into rural areas uh, and this came with its own challenges. Uh, in order to overcome the challenges, it's important that we work in partnership with rural communities and listen to your concerns when it comes to connectivity and capability in this area. Uh, in 2016, MB uh, investigated how the Internet of Things uh, could make a difference to agri-tech here in New Zealand, and one of the key findings that came out of that pilot was a disconnect between those who create technology and those who are actually using it and what they're using it for. Um, so it's all very well to have uh, a GPS-enabled tractor, uh, but it's not very helpful uh, if the tractor fails to work when it's surrounded uh, by trees in the paddock. And uh, these kinds of stories make me and some of our policy people um, think about two things. The first is the need for events like this today, uh, which allow rural communities to come together and discuss what they want um, from technology and connectivity and how they expect it to work in their areas to benefit them. Uh, and secondly, it, it highlights the need uh, to view the, the digital divide as wider than technology and infrastructure. It's also about giving uh, people their say uh, uh, in the process as well. Uh, so late, late last year, the Minister for Regional Economic Development, Shane Jones and I, announced that Northland um, would be the first region to receive one of three regional digital hubs. Uh, these hubs will allow people to connect uh, for business development and support and offer Wi-Fi connectivity, co-working spaces and guidance on use of the internet for business and for skills development purposes. Uh, and the Ministry is currently working on establishing future uh, regional hubs in two more regions uh, and there'll be some announcements on that soon. Uh, earlier this month the Government also announced a further $20 million investment to connect more rural marae to broadband networks uh, both to Hohanga Marae and to Oromohoi Marae are connected in Northland uh, and another 11 marae in Northland are looking at getting connected. Uh, the benefit uh, of this service is an enhanced ability uh, for Māori to access key services and skills necessary for improved economic uh, participation. Uh, alternative ways for rangatahi and whānau to learn skills for a modern workforce and increased productivity to local and emerging uh, business ventures. Uh, alongside Northland we're also partnering with more WISPs uh, to bring more connectivity to more places and today we have uh, 17 WISP partners helping us to provide broadband uh, to these rural areas and the partnerships between the WISPs uh, and the government is incredib incredibly beneficial and we couldn't have made uh, inroads into remote and rural New Zealand without them. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, as Field Days was underway, we also released a quarterly report which highlighted positive progress with rural connectivity reporting back on the UFB initiative, uh, the RBI and also the Mobile Black Spot Fund. Uh, that um, release saw that 33,804 rural homes and businesses can now access improved broadband services. Uh, 166 kilometres of state highway have now received new mobile coverage and seven mobile towers are no, now complete and more obviously to come. Digital initiatives uh, such as those I've just mentioned will go a long way to helping close the urban and rural digital divide. However, in order to truly close the gap, we need to invest not just in connectivity but also in capability. And while upskilling users uh, is essential work, we also need to make sure that technology that is being marketed to them is useful. Uh, and this is where I see Chuans uh, playing an important role through organising events uh, such as today's symposium, uh, where people can come to together to discuss how they see the future of technology working uh, in rural areas to their benefit. 
Um, as the current programs draw to a close, we do need to start thinking about what is next for connectivity in New Zealand. And while this work is ongoing, we are looking at how New Zealanders that are beyond the reach of current programs can be best served. We're also looking at areas which are running into capacity constraints, even though, though they are covered uh, by government programs. And just before I finish and open up for questions, I want you to um, touch on the Rugby World Cup. Um, kick-off to the Cup is only a couple of months away, uh, and like many uh, in this room, I want to make sure that, um, that we can watch uh, our All Blacks play. Uh, management of the broadcasting of the Rugby World Cup is a commercial matter for Spark and his partners to work through, but I'm encouraged that Spark is working with others to ensure that online viewing is possible. I also understand that local fibre companies and WISPs are part of an industry group providing a crucial perspective on how networks uh, in rural and remote regions can get ready to stream the Rugby World Cup. However, I know that connecting to fibre is not an option for everyone, especially in remote areas. I've been reassured by Spark that those without adequate access to broadband will have the ability to view key matches free to wear. Television New Zealand will broadcast 12 of the 48 games free to wear, seven of which will be live, including the final. Uh, what this means is that all New Zealanders, irrespective of their connectivity options, will have the ability to watch the All Blacks in action and live when they make the finals. Hope I haven't jinxed us there. Um, I have asked Spark to keep me regularly updated on developments and to engage with businesses such as pubs and clubs to ensure they are prepared to know and know their streaming options uh, before the tournament begins. I've also asked Spark to do everything they can to ensure that New Zealanders understand their connection and viewing options. Uh, if there are technical issues, Spark has assured me that it has an operational contingency plan in place. I hope that's not needed, but I am pleased that there is a plan. Uh, I'd like to close today by touching on an earlier message um, that I am here to listen uh, and I'm quite keen to hear on what the issues that are concerning this group. But to access to digital con connectivity and closing the digital divide are two of my priorities in the broadcasting communications uh, and digital media space. Uh, I look forward to hearing um, about your discussions today and how to work together to provide increased connectivity that is accessible and beneficial for all of you, for your businesses and your communities. So on that note, I'm happy to answer any questions. Can I preempt a question? Because I know we've got some folk from the Tarado here um, who are interested uh, in making sure um, that their community, um, which faces some uh, challenges in terms of connectivity and terrain, uh, is better served. Um, uh, as we roll out RBI 1 and 2, um, I did acknowledge in my speech that there are some, some small pockets of capacity problems uh, within those areas, but there are other areas uh, where there is no connectivity at all. Um, and um, we've got officials looking at uh, what the next option for any kind of post RBI 1 or 2 uh, world is um, and that is um, looking at whether uh, we do one of three things, um, continue along that road um, or look at uh, investing in where there is no connectivity at the moment. So we've asked officials to go away, look at those areas like the Tarador, uh for example to figure out who they are uh, what kind of communities they are and I think importantly what kind of economic impact they have and what we can do to make sure um, we can serve them in some way shape or form. When we've been um, doing the rounds with uh, WISPs around the country um, they've been connecting us with farmers and other businesses in rural communities and fundamentally telling us what's important to them and why it's important to their businesses. Um, and it's been uh, an eye-opening experience to not only just understand that it's useful for them in terms of their own farms and their ability to use technology to be more productive uh, and more efficient, uh, but also um, to attract um, the kind of quality staff that they want because um, some of these staff uh, have expectations of the kind of con connectivity um, that they want if they're going to move to some of these um, uh, remote areas. So we're taking all of those kinds of issues on board as we think about what we do past our, uh, post uh, RBI2. Yeah. Tane Sesson, yeah. Morena. My name Morena. is Sarah Passmore. I'm from Tutumu Paido, the Māori trustee. Um, we've been working 
Kukri and the Māori Land Court around the Whenua Māori program about getting Māori landowners to be able to access um, services for the Māori Land Court and they're looking at digitising the Māori Land Court processes. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you've got any kind of indication about how much your ministry is working with that program, if there's opportunities to kind of get involved to help with the Māori Land Court and some of their digital rollout of their services? Uh, the frank answer is uh, I haven't had any oversight of that yet. Um, but if we can get your contact details, if there's some ways that we can help make that process more efficient, then we can have a look. Oh yeah, kia ora. Um, kia ora. I'm Ivan Lomax. I'm with uh, Wi-Fi Connect, uh, one of the WISPs. Yep. Um, we're working predominantly down the South Westland, which is a pretty challenging area. Um, has there been any sort of ministerial discussions regarding um, dock concession fares for WISPs? We've... Um, we realise we've got a three year um, um, sort of where we don't pay for a lease but after that it could potentially be commercially not viable to um, supply especially with a long stretch all the way down to South Westland if we're hindered by a lot of um, fees that DOC require on sites. Thank you. Okay, I have, again that issue hasn't come to me at a ministerial um, level I kind of I th I'm thinking and I'm looking at CIP here <laughs> uh, that that would be uh, part of the commercial process in terms of uh, what you do when you know with any landowner um, in terms of uh, a lease to access land over time um, th there, there obviously is an overall uh, will of the government to make sure a lot of our uh, remote and rural areas have the coverage that they need um, if we're um, confronted with an issue that it's becoming uneconomic because of what might be being charged to you by a government agency, then I think we'd need to work through that to make sure that people have connectivity.